Is that it this weekend? Or we got we got Joshua fighting as well, right? Yes, you do. Anthony Joshua was supposed to fight Big Baby Miller, but he failed every drug test you can. He literally was taking everything. Name a drug. He was on it. Um, so that's not happening. Then he's supposed to fight Ortiz, and Ortiz dumbass management asked for too much. So we didn't get Lu Luis Ortiz versus Anthony Joshua, which would have been an amazing fucking fight. Thank you, boxing, for that. So we get Ruiz Jr. He just fought. If you watch the Mikey Garcia fight outside, he fought in that. Um, and he won. He won. He won uh, in the fifth round, right? Yeah. Uh, it was very hot, kind of sweaty. Um, his biggest fight was, would probably be when he fought for the vacant WO title against our boy Joseph Parker. Shout out to Joseph Parker. I miss you, man. I know you listen to the show. I love you. Hopefully he's doing well out there in New Zealand. Uh, if you don't know who Joseph Parker is, he lost to Anthony Joshua in England. But uh, jo Joseph Parker was on, was it the first blow the belt I've ever done? One of the new ones. One of the first seasons. One of the early ones. Yeah, we did the thing with the fish. We went to Vegas. Just a great guy. This whole squad are great people, man. Uh, hopefully he's doing all right out in New Zealand. Regardless, Anthony Reeves Jr. lost to Joseph Parker in a decision for the vacant WBO title. Um, and now he's, you know, he's fighting fucking Anthony Joshua in uh, Joshua's debut in America. And it's for all the belts, damn near. The WBA, the IBF, all of them. So uh, I would assume Joshua's a minus 3,000 favorite. I've seen it as much as minus 4,000. Sure places. you have. Um, doesn't matter. Though, and it's not a knock on Ruiz. It's short notice. He's, all the odds are against him. It's Joshua's debut in America. Joshua's coming over here kind of flex uh, on uh, Wilder and see where he's at. Plus, remember, this is on DAZN, correct? Mm -hmm. DAZN really wants to put a, a mark in the, in the marketplace in the United States. You can do that with Anthony Joshua. He's such a big name. Not a big name out here. I think they're going to be surprised by these numbers. Um, and that, that, that's just the way it is. I think if Wilder went over there and fought, uh, you know, a guy of Ruiz caliber when it blow their hair back. It's not a knock on Joshua. It's just where the market's at in America for Anthony Joshua, especially against Ruiz Jr. Um, I, I I think it's the first step and a huge step in to getting Anthony Joshua versus Wilder. They're testing the, the marketplace. I think you get Joshua versus uh, Wilder in Vegas or Barclays Center in Brooklyn after this. I do think that's next. I think Wilder versus Joshua is so much closer than Wilder versus Fury because of promoters and shitty uh, contracts. But I, I do think Joshua versus Wilder is a lot closer than we think. I think he gets Ruiz out of there in under four. I don't think it's going to be a highlight knockout like we saw with Wilder versus uh, Brazil. Um, that's just not Joshua's style, really. But um, hopefully the boxing gods, and this isn't a knock on Ruiz. I just want to see Anthony Joshua versus Wilder, Anthony Joshua versus Fury. Hopefully the boxing gods don't fuck us and have Ruiz knock him out in a fluke knockout because that would ruin everything. Ruin everything. Not that I dislike Ruiz or rooting against them. I just, I want to see Wilder versus Joshua. I think it's close to happening in America. Joshua by knockout under four, but not as impressive what Wilder did to Brazil. Boom. Is that it, dude? That's it. Just fan questions. Oh, man. What you got? All right. First one's from Kenji. Dude, can we just acknowledge my fucking outfit today? How summer macho is man? this outfit? This is a Macho Man shirt. My boys at... The, the Roosevelt, the Roosevelt sent me this. They have other, I think they have Stone Cold. They have some other dudes. This is so goddamn summer. This is Macho Man Randy Savage, my favorite growing up. Very Fuck. pink. It's so summer, dude. All right, I had to acknowledge that. Did he? Well, he's dead, so. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh. All right, yeah, first one is from Kenji.DF. Who's your favorite MMA prospect at the moment? So it could be anywhere. UFC, Bellator. Who's homeboy we saw doing all the jumping shit last week? Oh, Michelle my Pejea. Me Michelle Pejea. There you go. <laughs> He's fun to watch. Super fun. All right. Nick Christie won. Does Gustafson retire if he loses? Yes. 100%. 100%. D. Dunna, he won. Does anybody beat Khabib ever or does he retire undefeated? 
see Khabib losing, man. With his style, he's such a nightmare. He's a fucking nightmare. I can see him losing if he goes up to 70. I don't see him doing that. Maybe he stays at 55. I'm fucking rooting for Dustin Poirier. Tough fight, man. Every Everybody in a lightweight division will be an underdog. Could be big underdog. I, there's, the only close one with, with the style could really fuck with him would be Tony Ferguson. Let's see how Tony looks against uh, Cowboy. And after dealing with his outside issues, he'd be the only one who'd be a closer kind of narrowing the gap of an underdog, though. Could be the absolute nightmare. What else? Mr. Underscore Nashti does... Not does. Will Gary Tonin end up being a better at BJJ finisher in MMA than Maya, Danny Maya? Um, he would have to do it for a lot longer and have to do it at a high level. Like Damian Maya does the very high level guys. Tonin's in one championship right now. So he definitely has the potential, especially with his style to fucking twist off legs and ankles and arms and whatever the fuck he wants to do. And he's exciting to watch. He has the potential for sure. But you just have to, you have to come over to the UFC and do it. No one gives a fuck if you're doing one championship. I gotta be honest. Look at uh, Aoki. Yeah. Kimura got his ass whooped in the states. Gilbert Melendez went, oh, oh, cool. You can wear the tights. Cool. I'm gonna punch you in the face. What else you got? All right. This is the last one. Coach Coleg, if Poirier wins this in September, do you think they'll give him Connor next, or will they do the winner of Tony and Cowboy, or does that depend on who wins? It depends on who wins and how they win. It also depends on what Connor's doing. Because Connor versus Dustin makes the most sense for Connor. A rematch would make a lot more sense, and it's definitely more favorable for Connor. Connor versus Khabib is not favorable for Connor in any facet. Connor versus Dustin Poirier is favorable. Connor versus uh, Nate Diaz would be favorable at 55. Connor versus um, Gaethje is more favorable. Connor versus Don Cerrone is more favorable, so it just depends how they win and what's best for Connor. If he's going to come back, the UFC is going to do whatever he wants. That's how big of a fight. Fight this weekend Sweden. in Sweden. Yeah, Alexander Gustafson. His last time he fought there was that against Rumble. Remember that heartbreaking fucking fight? Um, oh yeah, it was. In front of his family and Dude, everything, right? That broke my heart. <sighs> yeah. Stockholm. He fought Glover oh. in Sweden. So he's fought there since. But the big one was for the fucking, is for to get the title shot. He fought fucking Anthony Johnson, man. He got knocked out. I thought it was a headbutt. Uh, oh yeah, you guys were debating that for. The but then he still time. gets the title shot. Go back to his record. Then go. Then beats. D, then fights DC. Loses in a split decision to be the world champion. His 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 career is a little bit of a heartbreak. He's just a hair off. The Maybe. DC fight could have went either way for him to be world champion. Doesn't go his way. Then he comes back, beats Jan, right? And then fucking destroys Glover Teixeira. Not destroys, but knocked him out. You know, in the fifth round, there's no punk. Fight of the night. Then he gets to fight for the championship again. And that's his uh, one, two. So then he fights for a third time. You really don't get three title fight opportunities. So he fights for a third time. Fights John for the second time. So his three title fights have been John Jones, the first one, uh, UFC 165. But there's another kid who stole the show that night. <clears throat> and then uh, so he fights John, fight of the night. Some people thought he won that fight. I can see how they give it to John, but it's basically fight of the year for the world championship. He loses. Comes back, fights DC for the world championship, and that's in 2015. Loses by split decision by a hair to DC. He's one of the greatest of all time. Argument greatest heavyweight of all time as well. Then finally comes back after that. Gets two wins over high level guys. And fights John Jones for third title shot. And loses. Groin strike. <sighs> it's his career. And he is so fucking talented. Alexander's so, so good. It's unbelievable how good he is at fighting. Uh, his fight against our boy Smith all depends on where is Alexander at 
in the mental space. Does Alexander want to be world champion? Does he want to be in there? Does does he think he can beat John Jones in DC? Does he really think he's the absolute best light heavyweight in the world? Great grand. He can definitely beat Anthony Smith. If there's any notion in his mind that he doesn't want to be in there, Anthony Smith will knock him out, man. Anthony Smith is a fucking dog. I think he went over a ton of people when he fought John Jones and went to decision. He could have easily copped out when he got fucking hit in the nuts or the eye. What was it? An eye nut shot? Remember that? He could have easily backed out of that fight. Oh, he, illegal knee. Remember yeah, the illegal knee? Yeah. He could anybody would have been like, oh, fuck this. I'm out, man. Didn't. Went on. Lost via decision. But I think people learn, oh, shit, Anthony Smith is the real deal. Lou Rockhold says different. That's fine. That's his opinion. He's an animal. I can't wait to see him at light heavyweight. But I think people underestimate Anthony Smith, man. And if if Gus Finn overlooks Anthony Smith or thinks this is an easy one in his hometown, he's going to get knocked out again in his hometown. Alexander is so fucking good, man. He's so good. That's a good main event. I'm, I'm, I should say I'm more curious about this main event than anything. But for Alexander Gustafson, let's say he beats Anthony Smith. Then what? Then what, Alexander? A fourth title shot? That's unheard of. A fourth time at who? Who are you going to fight? John Jones? For a third time? I don't see the UFC doing that. I wish Gustafson would go to heavyweight, man. I really do. I wish he'd go to heavyweight. I don't know what's for him at light heavyweight. So he beats Anthony Smith, but then, all right, there's, I highly doubt they give you John Jones again, even though there's really no one for John Jones to fight. Whatever. I don't know what they're going to do. I'm intrigued by this fight. Then fucking no time, Volkan Ozdemir, back at it. Not an easy fight for the hometown boy. Latifi. Jimmy Manawat. There's some fun fights on this, man. Does it not going to blow your hair back? And it's fucking Swedish as fuck card. But that main event intrigues me. But I'm assuming that Gus Finn's a heavy favorite. Minus 325. Listen, you guys know me, man. I like to bet on the dogs. Wow, they got Manawa as a dog. Ozemir's barely a favorite. That makes sense. Not a bad idea to put some money on Anthony Smith just because the the X factor. We don't know where Gus Finn, if he wants to be in there. If he doesn't, it's going to be a tough night for him. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.